think it's really difficult to kill <laughs> an email program. Um, I mean, one of the you know, kind of sad truths about email marketing is that you can do email marketing like kind of not all that well and still generate like a decent ROI. Um, That's which, sad. You know, I think it's sort of sad. <laughs> yeah, it means that a lot of brands like leave a lot of money on the table because they're just like, I think there's a lot of like people settling for good enough. They're like, oh, that's that's good enough, especially if they're comparing it to, you know, their TV mm -hmm. or radio ads or other you know, traditional channels. The ROI on email is, is so strong that a lot of people are like, oh, all right, that's that's great. Email's not on fire. Email's doing fantastic. So we'll just turn our attention over to these other channels that are really struggling and let, let's invest a lot of money there. Um, you think that's why we're... That's the opposite of what I would do. Yes. Oh, that, that, yeah. that, that's yeah. exactly my point. Do you think that's why we are email is always underfunded? I, I do think that's part of the, a big part of the reason why email is chronically underfunded is that there's a lot of like good enough, uh, <laughs> a lot of people settling. And I also think that also sometimes like people like misunderstand, like they, under, they misunderstand return on investment. Mm -hmm. um, I've heard a lot of brands, you know, kind of laud that, they get like 80 to one return on investment with email. I heard one company bragging about how they get like a hundred to one return on their investment in their email marketing program. And to me, like they were super proud yeah. of that. And to me hearing that, I think, oh my gosh, you're doing it totally It wrong. was one of like, the ESPs, you... yeah? Well, uh, well so, yeah, there was one ESP recently talking about like what a high ROI yeah. all of mm -hmm. their clients mm -hmm. get. And so like when I see numbers like that, I think, oh my goodness, like you were doing this all wrong. You're stopping way too soon. You're grabbing all the low hanging fruit and you're skipping off on your merry way uh, when you're just leaving like a tree full of fruit. <laughs> like you just reach up a little bit higher. You should be doing more work and getting lower returns, right? If you're achieving a hundred to one you know, return on investment on your email marketing program, you need to be looking for more programs, more initiatives that you can do that would get 80 to one, 60 to one, 40 to one, even 20 to yeah. one. Like there's a ton more things you could be doing that would be, yes, delivering lower returns on your investment, but you would be growing your total return, your absolute return. <laughs> you'd be growing, you'd be making more money, which is the whole point. Nobody, nobody sets out, um, you know, you want you want good mm -hmm. margins for sure, but most companies like given the chance to have really high rates of return versus really high returns would choose really high returns. <laughs> and so I feel like there's like a little bit of like um, you know we've kind of done our industry a little bit of a disservice yeah. on focusing on ROI so much because I think it leads to people stopping way too soon. Mm -hmm. Um, and leaving just tons and tons of money on the table. Uh, you know, so lately the analogy I've been using is a Vegas, <laughs> a Vegas analogy. Like imagine if you go to Vegas and you find a penny slot machine and you put in a hundred pennies mm -hmm. and it spit out $40, $80, whatever. Um, would you stop? <laughs> would you just get up and leave? I don't, I don't think most people would, but that does seem to be what's happening. I would stay there and keep feeding in pennies until my return went way down. Mm -hmm. But if it kept giving me, you know, 40 to one returns on my time sitting there and on my money, like I would stay at the seat. But it seems like a lot of brands are getting up from the seat. Interesting.